Yo, what's going on guys? Kevin Mendoza here, back at it again with another tutorial. Okay, so if you don't know by now, the bulk of my work is real estate shoots. So it's my job to provide cinematic, breathtaking video walkthroughs of these homes. However, sometimes it could get a little challenging because the dominant lighting of the home is unflattering especially in basements where there's low light and unwanted color cast. Today, I'm gonna show you how I go about fixing that. All right, here we are once again in DaVinci Resolve's color tab. Here we have our clip. This is the basement of this home. So we have a ping pong table. And back here in this room, we have a billiards table. And further back, like towards the left, we have a bar and a seating area. And out here is the outside. The lighting in this room is, I'm assuming, tungsten. If we go to our camera raw options, well, yeah, we'll set it on clip. Um, now, I shot it in daylight, but, you know, because of Blackmagic Raw, you could change the metadata to be whatever you want. So, we'll go tungsten. This is the closest that we're going to get as far as setting white balance, but we still want to fix the colors of the wall and a little bit of the exposure. Now, the cool thing about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K is that it has dual native ISO, and I shot this room beyond... ISO 1000, which kicks in the second native ISO, which drops the noise floor. So you could actually increase the gain quite a bit while not having as much noise in the shadows. All right, let's get this color grading on its way. Let's first, in our first node, let's just play around with the exposure. Let's drop the shadows, increase the midtones. All right, so not too much going on there. I do think that the image looks as bad as it does because of the colors more so than the exposure. So let's try to fix the colors. We want to match the walls of this room to match the walls of the room back here because all the walls are supposed to be the same color. So let's add a second node. I'm doing that by hitting Alt S. And what I want to do in this node is target the colors of this wall so that way I could change them to match this wall. And I could do that a few different ways. I could go to the Curves tab and use HSL uh, Hue versus Hue. Let's see what happens if I click here. So it's selecting that color. And let's try pushing it towards reddish. So already we're looking kind of close. Not too bad. Let's park it maybe here. So I can view a before and after by clicking the number of the node. So before, after, before, after. Already that's looking kind of decent. So the colors of this room are now matching this room and that's looking okay. Next, let's get our whites in check. I'm gonna add another node. I like to separate everything I do with a separate node so that way I can keep track of what correction I did. Normally I see people label them, but who's got time for that? So in our third node, I'm just going to click the auto white balanced eyedropper and click on what's supposed to be white. Boom, ooh, okay. I kinda like how this looks. So it looks kind of too magenta for me. I do want to pull back the magenta just a little bit. So I'll come down here to tint. I'll dial that back just a little bit, like just a few points. You know what? I do want to warm up everything just a little bit more, just a little bit. So that way the walls look more like wood as opposed to a magenta mess. Okay. So when we did that, we actually warmed up the white parts again. So it looks like we're gonna have to do that separately. So let's add another node and let's target only the whites. So I'm gonna do that by going to our qualifier, making sure that picker is selected, 
click on whatever is white and we will make sure, okay, whatever we clicked on is white. And to do that, let's try desaturating how much color is in there. So right now I have the mask on by clicking this highlight tool. I could see what my qualifier has selected. And I just want to pull all the color away from this so that way it looks white. So we'll come down here to saturation. We'll pull that back. All right, you see how it got rid of all that yellow action that's going on? And let's see how that looks with the rest of the image. Okay, looking pretty clean. Uh, there's still a little bit of yellow or brown going on here. And that's because our qualifier didn't hit that part. So let's see if we could fix that. Let us play around with the luminance. Let's pull this down. Okay, here we go. That should do it. And all this stuff, like, it really doesn't matter. You're not going to be able to tell. You're not going to be able to see it. We could denoise it a little bit just so it hides it. Maybe clean up the blacks. And let's see how we're looking here. All right, so we have our walls white. We have our wood panels looking like wood, matching the color of this back part of the room over here. Now, there are a few things that we can do to clean this up. So we have some fully desaturated areas where it's super bright. I guess that is where um, this light source is putting a glare on the walls, like over here, here, and here. So let's see what we can do to inject some colors into those areas just to make it a little bit more realistic. Let's add another node, Alt-S, and let's see how we want to do this. Let's try, you know what, let us try Qualifier, why not? Let's make sure the picker is selected. We'll click here, see what comes up, and all right. So because it is desaturated, it's selecting everything that's desaturated, which is our white walls. We don't want that. We just want these areas, the parts of the wood that are desaturated. So let's control Z, undo that. And let's find another way. Let's try. Ugh, let's try masking. I hate masking, but it's got to be done. Let's go to the power window tool and let's select our circle. So right now highlight is on, so it's showing whatever is going to be masked, right? And let us, what the hell? Uh, power window, there you go. Let's just mask out that part. Let's try this. And let us inject some color in there. Let's move this color wheel towards orange to match as closely as we can the colors of the walls. I'm probably going to park it right there. So before, after. You see that? I'm clicking on the number of this node to turn on and off this node. So before, after. Close enough, right? We could feather this out just to make it a little nicer and make it not too obvious that we are masking. So we are at the beginning of the clip as far as our playhead goes. And the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve's uh, color space or DaVinci Resolve in general is that it has some really good tracking. So while our node is selected, let's go to tracker and it's going to track this mask on whatever pixels is underneath it right now. So let us just hit the play button and see what happens. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. And that was in real time too. Like I didn't speed up the video or anything. So we could see that as we scrub through, that mask is staying in place, keeping our colors consistent there. So it does fall off a little bit here, but you could just fix that with keyframing, or you could just end the clip here. And that's the easy way to do it. And if you wanted to, 
we can again go back to the beginning of this clip we have some desaturated areas here and here and we'll just do the exact same thing but we'll click this circle with a plus next to it to add one you can't click on the same one because then it'll just click on this one so we'll do the exact same thing we'll spread this out all right and we're at the beginning of the clip we'll track that too tracker and play oh look at that it even expands in size you see that so it started out as a narrow oval and then it expanded oh my god and then we have a few more spots here and here and maybe here i mean wherever you want to fill in the spots you do so but for the most part let's just unclick oh whoops unclick everything so we we just see just the image no masking play this back and there we go from at this point on you're just cleaning up all the little imperfections that will most likely go unnoticed to anyone watching or is unaware of you know how to do this kind of stuff so you know fix it up as much as you need to but i mean this is good enough for me and that's pretty much it. That is how I fix terrible lighting in what's otherwise a very cool looking house. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was of some help to you. As always, be sure to check the description down below. I have all kinds of good stuff down there. Subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.